intelligent to know right to a viral. If they advertising fine, they put a woman there. Advertising air condition, they put a woman there. Advertising anything. Everything is connected with the affection and the loss and the love of the world. But the Lord is saying, come out of the affections of the world. In Galatians chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 24. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 24. Galatians 5, verse 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. They have crucified the flesh and the affections. Then you come out of the ambitions of the world. You know, there are many ambitions, ambitions of the world. And there are people that have that kind of ambition, and they will do anything and everything to get there. But you know, you might uh, get there and still lose your soul. Like Absalom, you know what he wanted? He had an ambition, the ambition of Absalom. I'll be there. Even if he had to kill his father, I'll be there. Even if he has to drive away his father from the throne, I'll be there. You know, when you become so drunk with success, and you become so drunk with prosperity, and you become so drunk with position, and you become so drunk with power, I must be there. Even if I kill David, my father, even if I run David out of town, even if I even take all the people and then begin to take bad advice because of ambition. Ahithophel said, you know, if you go into those women associated with your father in the presence of all Israel, then the people will know that your father has hated you because of what you have done, and then your mind will be strong, their mind will be strong, and that young man he said, just give me any advice. Anything that will make me to realize my goal, my dream, my ambition, I will do it, even if it is immorality, even if it is abomination, I will do it. You know, there are people like that, they have such great ambition that they want to lose their soul in getting into that ambition. They want to become a chief in the local village. And uh, sometimes you read uh, that somebody has, be has been a professor at university, and now he wants to become a traditional chief. And he leaves the ivory tower of education, and he goes into idol worship, and they put all these beads on him, and he says, I am not professor anymore of whatever field. I am now a chief. What kind of thing is this? The ambition of the world. And the Lord is saying, come out of the ambition of the world. In Genesis chapter 11, I'm reading to you there from verse 4. Genesis chapter 11, verse 4. And he said, Go to. Let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name. That is it. Let us make us a name. When you come to the church here, you're not coming to make a name here. You want to get to heaven. That's why you came to this church. But when any group of people in the church Maybe you are choir. And then in the, your little group in the choir there, let us make us a name. And we will do anything to get the attention of everybody. Or you are a group of young people there, let us make us a name. It's an ambition. And it's the ambition of the world. And the Lord is saying that kind of ambition is destructive. It will not allow you to get to heaven. Let us come out of the ambition of the world. They said, let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Upon the face of the other. We don't want to be scattered. We want to remain where we are. The people that built the Tower of Babel is that we are here, we are here, we are here forever. I will build this tower reaching up to heaven. And we will not spread in all the earth where the Lord is sending us. We will not have that attitude. The Lord will deliver us from the ambitions of the world in Jesus' name. I need a great amen. Number four, from the associations of the world. Associations of the world. You know that today in primary school, those young people, they will come together. Some of them, there's now cult in a primary school, and they will 
pinch themselves or cut themselves with a blade and put their blood in a cup and, 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 they, and they mix it with water and then they'll drink. We are now in association together. You go to secondary school, the same thing today. Association, association. You go to university, there is association. And now when you come to those who are selling, you come to the adult world, the people who are barbers, there's association. Those who are trading, there's association. There are those who are selling spare parts, there's association. Those who are pull, pushing truck, carrying loads, those who help you, you come out from the bus, you want to go to another bus stop, and they carry your load, they have association. And the people that are not even doing anything, they are not doing anything, they are only stopping the vehicle, how much money did you get? Bring uh, your contribution. All those people, they have association. Everybody has association today. But if you're a Christian, your citizenship is in heaven. I said your citizenship is in heaven. And you are not in any association that will pull you down. When Christ will come, you break all the cord and you break all the string. Anything tying you to any association here in the world will not allow you to go in the rapture, but I'm going in the rapture. I said I'm going in the rapture. I will not be tied down. You will not read my name in any society, any secret cause. I will not belong to any association. I am for Christ. I said I am for Christ. I said I am for Christ. I belong to any association. We have cut off from those associations and we are the people going to heaven. We are strangers on this earth and we are pilgrims on this earth. Our home is in heaven in Jesus' name. In James chapter 4, James chapter 4, I am reading to you from verse 4. James chapter 4 verse 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you belong to those associations, come out. Otherwise, God will count you as an enemy. Number five, the agitations of the world. The agitations of the world. The agitations of the world. Uh, do you know what is happening in the world today? Agitation. Agitation. You know what that means? If uh, the people of the world, they want to get anything, what do they do? They begin to agitate. They begin to trouble everybody. And nobody will have peace until they have that thing. And if, uh, you know, they come out, if the police try to calm them down, and then they will fight with the police. And uh, if uh, the police hurt any of them, mistakenly or even deliberately, why try to calm them down? They will go inside, they'll go and regroup again, and they'll go and reportify themselves again. They'll come out the second day. Even if somebody dies in their agitation, they don't care, they don't mind. Even if they die and lose their souls and get to hell, they don't care. They come out again for agitation. They say, well, fight it through. And then sometimes the police will, you know, throw tear gas and shoot and randomly and everything. After they run like this, ten minutes after you think that they have listened, they come out again. And they begin to chant their song. Agitation. And then when you come to the church, and the people that have been agitations in the world, and now you come to the church, and then you want something from the pastor. You want something from the church. And instead of going the humble way, and going the loving way, and going the scriptural way, and going the Christian way, you don't come the Christian way, it's agitation. By making noise, by knocking something, by pulling down something, by removing something from whatever. And then, as the agitation comes, somebody will shout there, someone will shout there, agitation. Thank God I'm not part of them. You, you, you. Praise the Lord. I will not be part of them in Jesus' name. Hey, look at First Peter, First Peter, reading from chapter 4. First Peter, chapter 4, reading from verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we watch in lasciviousness and loss and excess of wine and rebellions and banquetings and abominable idolatry, wherein they think it strange that she run not with them to the same excess of riot. We are not rioters anymore, speaking evil of you. Because we are not part of them anymore, that's why they speak evil of us. Number six, the amusements of the world. It's called rebelling in Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21. 
Galatians chapter 5, we're looking at verse 21, that we're no more involved with the amusements of the world, the music of the world. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 21. And means murders, drunkenness, revelings. Those are the amusements of the world and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I've told, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. If you are part of the uh, people having the amusements of the people of the world, the entertainment of the world, then you will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's surprising today as we see some people when they are getting married, the kind of music that you hear there. And the kind of uh, merriment they have there, and the kind of uh, they, they are distributing plays, and they put their picture, and they put their names, and then they, they put some other things. And if they have one useless certificate of primary six, they say, you know, they, they even write their curriculum vitae now on the plate, on the something, you know, so and so. The picture is there, the name is there, uh, primary school, uh, school certificate, uh, 1982. And uh, secondary school, the secondary school, uh, this one is that, uh, you know, C and D all through. And then it says uh, 19 something. And this one and this one, which one is that? The amusement of the world, the entertainment of the world, and the revelings of the world, all those things, we're going to pass them away. We will not have anything to do with them anymore. Things are different now. We're children of God. The amusement of the world will go in Jesus' name. And then the apparel of the world, and the appearance of the world, and the adornment of the world in Zephaniah. Zephaniah is near to the end of the Old Testament. In Zephaniah, we're looking at uh, chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Zephaniah reading from chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Did you see what the Lord said? I will punish them, the princes. Or the king's children. Sometimes they say, you know, the daughter of, of a leader in the church. The daughter of a woman coordinator. And the, or the daughter of a, of a coordinator in the church. Of a group coordinator. Or of an overseer in the church. And the way they dress, they say, are you not uh, so and so's daughter? Yes, I am. Why are you wearing something like this? But daddy saw it and did not talk. And daddy is the one overseeing the work in the whole region. And daddy didn't talk. Why are you wanting something like this? But mommy, mommy is a leader among the women, and she saw it and she didn't talk. King's children have punished them, the Lord said. And then it says, and such, all such as are clothed with strange apparel. In the same day, in verse 9, will I punish all those that live on the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. The Lord is telling us that if we're Christians, we're called out people. We are called out of the abominations of the world, out of the affections of the world, out of the ambitions of the world, out of the associations of the world, out of the agitations of the world, out of the amusements of the world, out of the apparel appearance and adornment of the world. We come to point number two, cleansed from godliness to promote godliness. As we come to the Lord, he cleanses us, he purges us, he purifies us. And as he cleanses us, then all those things of the world are not in our lives anymore. In Galatians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4 again. Galatians chapter 1. I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Grace be unto you, and peace from God the Father, and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God our Father. He cleanses us, he purges us, and when he does that, he takes the love of the world away from our hearts. He takes the love of the world away from our hearts. In First John chapter 2, First John chapter 2, reading from verse 14, he says, in verse 14, I preach unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I preach unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. 
You see, when you are cleansed, and when the grace of God energizes your life, you overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world, and the world passes away. Don't you see how their passions are passing away? Don't you see how their way of dressing is passing away? It's the men that are trying to weave their ear like, like women. And another time, it was earring in one ear. Another time, it's earring in two ears. It used to be little earring that the men will put on, and now it's the bogus type they will put on. And you know, for the women, it used to be earring alone. Now it's in the nose. And some of them even have it on the leaves. And some of them have it on the toe. And some of them, is, the fingers are not enough for, the, uh, for their jewelry now. It's now almost everywhere. The fashions of the world is not stable. It's passing away. But thank God for people of God. I said thank God for people of God. Because when we don't have any interest of who are we attracting, who are we impressing, are we impressing those people who are going to hell? We only want to impress God. We want to please God. And therefore, all those kind of appearances of the world, we're not going to have part in it. I said we'll not have part in it. And your parents have to be in control of your family. So see your boy, and he comes back home from school. And then he weaves his ear. You say, what is this? Don't come into this house. Go to the barber before you come in here and cut off that thing. And you see your girl, you see your daughter. Come in here with stranger. Where are you coming from? And where are you coming to? Are you coming to this house? This is where what I taught you. When I get back to you, you will not bring that to this house. The world will not set its foot on my house, in my home, in Jesus' name. You send them back to the barber, or you send them back to where they're coming from, and when they really want to live right, and act right, and appear right, and behave right, then they can come in. You will not pitch them, and you will not cover them up. And you will not say, well, you know, it's uh, my daughter. You know, the children of nowadays, the children nowadays, if you are going to live with me, you must get ready to go to heaven because I'm going to heaven. And anybody that was associated with me, my family, he must be ready to go to heaven. And you must have the same mind as well. The world passes away and the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Well, abide forever. Uh, look at what the Lord is telling us in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 2. And we're looking at verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good walls. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 3. In Isaiah chapter 3, Isaiah was very, very descriptive. And he told them uh, what they shouldn't have. And he told them why the anger of the Lord and the wrath of God and the judgment of God was upon them. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. Moreover, the Lord said, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with straight forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with his calf the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret paths. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their curls and their round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers and the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands and the, the tablets and the earrings and the rings and the nose jewels and the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins and the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils and it shall, it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be sting and instead of a gradually range instead of a well set here baldness and instead of stomacher there will be a garden of sackcloth and burning instead of beauty. You see the people today, you know, sometimes so you look at the face, and the face looks like a Jamaican. And then you look, at, uh, you look at the leg, the leg looks like a Sudanese. 
Why? Because uh, you know you have bleached uh, this place and bleached this place, and they forgot to bleach uh, the the feet. And so it's like you know you have a chameleon in the head, you have a lizard you know in the leg, and things are very very different. That's what God says. I'll give them honey instead of beauty. But the Lord has delivered us. I am delivered. I said I am delivered. And you keep your deliverance in Jesus' name. In Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22. I'm reading to you from verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so. Whether they are coming from anywhere in the world or they are coming from Nigeria here. All that do so are abominations unto the Lord thy God. Do you want to be an abomination?